All right, welcome back to week number four um, in cycle one. We continue our study of biology. Biology is the study of living organisms and their vital processes. Our simple definition is biology is the study of life and living things. Um, again, you wanna review your scientific method, which includes purpose, background research, your hypothesis, procedure, analysis of your results, and then a conclusion. Um, today and next week, we are studying pollution. Pollution is an outside force reacting on um, or causing disruption in the vital processes um, or the life cycles of some living organisms um, that it affects. So a, a full definition of pollution, because again, you want to define what we're talking about here, is the presence or introduction into the environment of a substance or thing that has harmful or poisonous effects. So I would talk to the kids, first of all, about, um, you know, what is their understanding of pollution? Um, things that cause pollution are called pollutants. So can they think of examples of pollutants? We learn in cycle two, six forms of pollution. Can they name those? Those are noise, air, water, sound, no, wait a minute. Noise, air, water, land, thermal, and radioactive. Um, so can there, anybody recite or remember those forms or types of pollution? Can you give examples of each of those types of pollution? Um, so, for these two weeks, again, this week and next, we are talking about pollution. Um, this first one, you just have one experiment, so you have a little bit more time to dive into it. So, again, if you can bring pictures. Um, again, I'll give you a couple pictures that um, Nicole Liam um, provides for us online. And um, you can show those, but if you have books or can find books with other pictures, um, talk about really this idea of pollution. Talk about the idea that God created this world um, for us to enjoy and for us to inhabit. And our responsibility then is to care for it and take care of it and not to be, um, not to cause harm um, within our ability and our capability. So these two weeks, we're going to really um, take advantage of that um, and just planting some little seeds in these kids' minds about how to be wise stewards of the earth that we've been given. So this week, week four, we are doing number 62 called pollution, primarily talking about water pollution. Um, and even when pollutants come in, um, so again, if you've talked about some examples of pollution, you can shift gears and talk specifically about water pollution. And can they give, you know, can you or the kids give examples of water pollution? Have you ever seen that happen? Have you ever seen the news when there's been oil spills or other spills that have contaminated water? How did that affect the wildlife around it? How did it affect birds, fish, even the people? Um, how about people who live places where they don't have clean running water? How does the pollution of sewage and, um, everything else around that um, affect their health and affect the life um, that they live. So, um, so talk about that a little bit because that is the purpose of today's demonstration is to learn how water pollution um, is present as well as how it affects the living organisms and things around it. Okay, so um, so you've talked about lots of background research and information. Um, you've talked about the purpose of it and um, their hypotheses will come here in a minute after you've started um, your experiment. So for this, you're going to have a gallon jug, your measuring cups, and food dye. The um, Van Cleves notes to put two drops of red food dye in there. I recommend just one because um, I found it very difficult to get rid of the color, which is our ultimate goal in this experiment. 
So you're gonna start out. This is our makeshift pretend little pond or lake or ocean. It's beautiful and crystal clear water. And then unfortunately, a very small amount, one drop of pollution comes in and takes place. And now it messes with our pond. Um, so you're going to first put this into your container here. Kind of mixes as you go. So I started with one and a half cups, like it recommends, just to kind of get started. I'll try to tilt this a little bit more so you can see it. Um, so, okay, so you can see this, the color of it. Um, so now we have polluted water. Um, our nice clean water is now filled with a red dye pollutant, um, much like some of the other examples we had previously talked about. So you can clearly see that this water is polluted. We would know if we came up one was like, oh, don't drink that. There is something funky growing there. And so, but over time, polluted water, rain happens, and so you're gonna just, I'm using a source here, but you can, I would recommend doing this by the sinks in your rooms, um, cause you're just gonna add a cup of water at a time and just look at the difference it makes in the color of our stream or pond here. Let's go and add a cup. Can you still see the pollution? Yep. Another cup. So now we've added two clean cups. You can say, so this is as, again, it rains, as the water flows down, um, downstream to wherever it's going to end up eventually in the ocean. Um, but it may go through the ground before it gets there. It may go through mountain streams. Think of all the living organisms, plants and animals, that are affected along this polluted water's journey. So now that was four cups I have added. Now we're going here. Can you still see that pollution? That pollutant is still present in our beautiful little stream. Um, do you notice anything happening though? What, what's different about this? Um, and you can see that it's getting less and less evident as we go. And again, this was only one drop of red food dye. And so you can see how potent that one little drop is. So now we're up to the, Van Cleve says after seven cups, it'll be clear, but you can see it's, um, that's why I only did one drop and it's still pink. So we're gonna keep going as best as we can here. And even though it still has color, you begin to see it's less dramatic for sure. And so the idea, you can ask the kids, why do you think it is, as you're doing this, that it's not as dark red, not as evident as it was when we first started? Um, what are their ideas for why that happens? And we're looking pretty good there. I'll fill it up just to see. Um, would you mind getting a little more water, please? I'm gonna help her today. Okay, so I'll fill it up all the way just so you can see kind of what it looks like, but it never, to me, turns beautifully clear again, which is true of pollution, but it is less eye-catching. Um, and ask, you know, talk about the kids, why is that? Again, if there were if there rain happening, the water's flowing down the stream, um, as that happens, the water dilutes the more and more water molecules come in it breaks up the red food dye molecules and so they are distributed in a less concentrated form so it's less noticeable um, 
And the question then is because it is less noticeable, is that pollution gone? Is it now diluted so much that it would cause no harm? Um, and that's as good as we get folks, which is pretty good, but you can still tell it's not clear. So, um, so that's the question, you know, if is pollution present, even if we can't see it? And the answer is yes. Um, as we demonstrated here, even when um, pollution, especially water pollution, is diluted and diluted and diluted, it's not so obvious, it's still present and still can cause harm all along that water's journey. And so it makes it so much more important. This was just one little drop of food dye. Imagine when large companies or um, oil distilleries or, or whatever have accidents that pollute our water, how long it takes for that to eventually get cleaned out and work its way out um, and the harm that's done in between. So it should motivate us to be all that more diligent in how we take care of the water around us. Um, so then I would conclude with saying this week and next week, I want to encourage our campus and community to find a way to clean up some pollution. Um, so the kids can think of anything in there as easy as picking up the trash in their yard to um, cleaning up around a pond if they have in their thing, doing some ocean cleanup, whatever they think of, um, to do a, a Earth Day or a pollution cleanup, and then talk about it during presentation. Um, time. So I'm going to be talking about it from morning assembly, but also you guys can talk about it in concluding this week and next. Um, we'll put our, our thoughts and our experiments into action and doing our own cleanup time. Thanks.